Hello and welcome. This is Rocket Man Dan. Today we're going to be starting a career playthrough of Kerbal Space Program on PS4. Now, I have got the Making History DLC, but for what we're going to do, I don't think you'll need the parts either, and really you can just find your own way. So let's start a new game. I'm going to start new and in this menu here you can choose sandbox, science or career. I like career, it gives me the right amount of challenge. You can also change your name or your flag. Let's just have a look, see. There we go, change flag. I always like to go for the uh, UK space flag. Obviously I'm British, so that's just what I like, but you can go for what you like. I'm going to leave the name as default and let's press start. Here we go, here's Jean, ready to greet us. Now, I've noticed a thing with Kerbal Space Program that it doesn't do a good job of explaining what all the different buttons do. And it took me quite a while to figure a lot of these things out. And even, even just uh, where to go from this screen, once you press X, that's about as much guidance as you're given. So we're just going to press X and it's going to tell us about the radial preset which I recommend, that's the one I use, but to each their own. So we've got the administration building which you don't really need to know about straight away and it's worth looking into once you've been playing for quite a while. You've got the astronaut complex, you can hire new astronauts if yours should die I suppose. The flagpole, well it's it does what it says on the tin really, the flagpole. Launch pad, that's where you'll be launching all your rockets from. Mission control, that is where you get missions. Now at the start you can only have two active missions at once and declining a mission once you've accepted it has a penalty. So choose wisely. Down here we have research and development and that's where you unlock the tech tree of new parts which will be very useful because we start off with bugger all. The runway to launch your planes from and maybe one day SSTOs. Space planes for designing said SSTOs. Tracking station. That's where you look at crafts already in space or on the planet itself. You can delete space junk and such from there. A vehicle assembly building, that's the one you'll be wanting to start off in really, but first let's go to mission control. Now, we're only allowed to accept two, so we don't want to accept the later two. So just using the normal directional buttons up and down we're going to gather scientific data from Kerbin and launch our first vessel. Both very easily done. So we're going to return to the space center with circle. Go on down to the VAB, Vehicle Assembly Building. And here we are in the VAB. This is Werner von Kerbin telling us about things that won't really help. Right now as you can see, just to the top left of the screen, I've got two command pods available. If you haven't got the DLC, you won't have both of these, but I won't be using the DLC today. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click L3 and I've got a mouse. It's not very precise, but it really does help. I'm going to go through the list. These are pods. Uh, as the game progresses you'll get more varying types and sizes and robotic uh, probes fuel tanks that's for liquid fuel tanks for when you're using liquid fuel engines which we don't have at the moment we only have one engine speaking of which here's the only engine we have the flea very small can't get you into space just yet but it'll come in useful command and control Reaction wheels, RCS thrusters, 
that type of thing. Structural, we do have, yes, a modular girder segment, which not very useful either just yet. We'll only be using a few parts. I, th I think we only start off with four. Uh, there's also nothing in coupling, which is a shame. Payload, nothing. Aerodynamics, we do have some fins to help with stability. Only just going to be a little dart to start off with, so we'll need something. Ground, we have no landing gear as of yet. Thermal, no, no heat shields. Electrical, nothing there either. No batteries except for what comes in the pods. Communication, no antennas. Science, we do have some science. The Mystery Goo Containment Unit which does yield quite a large amount of science for such an early game. Utility, we have a parachute which will come in handy. Right, so first let's choose a pot. We're just going to choose this one here just as it comes and to select it we're going to mouse over it and press X. There we go. Now I'm rotating my camera like this using the right long analog stick, sorry about that, left and right. And to zoom in, we're going to hold L1 and push the right analog stick forward. There we go. Perfect. The mouse on over here. Go to utility. Grab a parachute. That's very important. When building a spaceship on Kerbal Space Program, you want to start from the top down. The last piece of your spacecraft you want active is the first piece you put on. So obviously a parachute. So we're going to put a parachute on. There we go, just drag it on over and rest it. Press X to select where it goes. There we go, see? If you look down here, this is stage zero. This will be the last stage activated. And also, I figure we're going to put some science on there. So we've got one, but if we want a two, what we'll do is we'll go on down to this little doohickey and we'll press X on it and it gives us two times radial symmetry. Now if you see it always goes to the opposite side. We don't want to cover the hatch. That's very important. But we'll need science to start off with to unlock that tech tree. So I'm just going to press select on that. There we go. We've got two. Now I would like another one. But if I do this, it's going to do two again, see? So, what we go down to here again, and we'll press square on this little circle. And that'll make it go away. You can actually do this uh, without mousing over it by pressing triangle. And going down to change symmetry. If we click on that, we get radial one, two all the way around to 8 or we can have mirrored symmetry mirror 1 or mirror 2 but for now we just want radial 1 press triangle to get rid of it there we go I'm just going to stick this to the back there try and keep it slightly symmetrical now we'll want to add an engine there we go I'm not going to put any fins on this one now, has anybody spotted a problem? Because we do have one. Now, can you see how the parachute and the engine are in the same stage? So, when I'm on the launch pad and I press X, that means both of the, these items are going to fire at the same time, which obviously we don't want that. So, what we're going to do is mouse over to here, press on the plus button. We're going to hold onto the engine with X and just drag it down with the left analog stick into the box below it. And there we go, all ready to complete our first two contracts. So we're going to press start, we're going to go over to launch, press X to select it. Here we are on the launch pad. Right, not very good, not very big either, but we're only got a small craft to start off with. Right, so okay. I'm zooming in again, doing the same thing, L1 and the analog stick, the right analog stick. 
So first, let's do some science. I've got the uh, mouse on again with the left analog stick. Click it in. We only need to do science on one of these. So to highlight an item, just mouse over it and then press square. A little menu will pop up and what we want to do is observe mystery goo. There we go. Now we have three options here. We will get 1.3 science for transmitting it. If we had an antenna that is, but we don't, so that's not an option. We can also recycle the experiment, which means we don't take any data, but we can use it again. But for now I want to keep this one, okay? So we're going to click on keep. We also want to do the same here. We're going to click on the command pod with square, mouse up. And with the left, right analog stick, we're going to scroll up and down, see? We're going to do a crew report. There we go. Crew report from launch pad. Not much interesting to say about that, I suppose, but we're going to keep that as well. Now, we can't do an EVA whilst in flight, but we can whilst on the ground. So, we're going to mouse on over to this uh, portrait picture here. Press EVA. There we go. And it's a little bit tricky to do this on console, but if you just zoom in again and press square somewhere on the helmet, he doesn't light up. But there we go. If we do it too close, another menu will pop up that we don't want. So EVA report. There we go. Save that. Now see if I try and do here, it'll just just keep saying on the crew hatch, and we definitely don't want that. But what we want to do now is we want to press square on this again and collect the data. Now these mystery goo units can only be used once unless being reset by a scientist. So first let's just remove the data. That's why I've got three really. And we're also going to take the data out of the command pod. Because if we take it we can do another one. Even though we're bored in it, we're going to take it. So we're going to board by pressing circle and zoom out again. There we go. Right, now we are ready to launch. Right, it's going to be very unstable to launch like this. So what we want to do is activate the SAS, Stability Assist, something or other anyway. So first we'll press circle to activate SAS. And there we go, see? That just means the computer helps us keep it level whilst flying. Now, to activate the engine, we want to press X. That activates each stage. So, watch what happens. We're going to press X now. 3, 2, 1, launch. Oh, that was a fast launch. And I'm just tilting over, just so we can hopefully land in the ocean. But that's definitely a high thrust to weight ratio. Now, don't forget, we can't get rid of any of this weight at all. We can't let go of the engine, so we're going to have to land with all of this. But first, let's do another mystery goo unit and observe this mystery goo. So, I'm going to click observe. Now, if you see, the goo jiggles and wobbles as the craft flies. But that gives us seven science. So, we're going to keep that. We're also going to do another crew report, because we can. And extra science. Crew report three and a half. There we go. We've got one mystery goo unit left. We reached a height of 10,000 meters. Which, not bad for a flea, I suppose. But the speed is picking up, so now we're going to press X and release the parachute. Even though we're still very high, we don't want to get going too fast again so the parachute doesn't open. There we go. This will auto deploy to full shoot at 1000 meters above whatever surface you're about to impact. Whether that be a mountain which is 5000 meters tall or the sea which is at 0 meters sea level. So as you can see we're down to 3000 meters now. We can even turn off the SAS just to let it hang there see. Obviously it doesn't matter which direction we're flowing in. There we go, we're just opening up now and oh, Oh 
only 260 meters above the surface did we actually start slowing down that could have been a nasty job let's uh let's turn the command pod towards us now with l2 or r2 you can spin your capsule so i want to turn on stability assist again just to there we go see so there we are all zoomed in what we want to do though is when this lands we're going to take another goo unit and an EVA report so first let's do the goo square on the goo canister and observe keep we get four science for that also want to try and tip this over there we go and we're going to do an EVA going to collect any data in the capsule take data also going to do another EVA report now we're over the water there we go gives another 3.2 we're going to board again and now we're going to do another crew report should net us quite a bit of science there we go now from here and you want to get home obviously you either press start and recover vessel but most of the time I forget about that and I just mouse on over up here see just on the altimeter there you just click on it and you want to click recover vessel click on that whoa right now here we go we've got 44 science for that little flight there Telling us all about the different ones. How much did we recover? We're going to press how our one here. There we go. Three thousand four hundred and fifty Kerbal dollars from recovered parts. Our funds are one hundred and forty-four thousand. The crew, there's Jeb. We gained one XP. Great job, Jeb. All right. Okay. Now, if you look up here hang on there we go if you look up here we have now got 44.6 science points and 144,000 Kerbal dollars so what we're going to do with this is we're going to go down here to the R&D department see I'm going to click on that I'm going to unlock some science there we go oh right let's zoom out there show you how big the tech tree goes doesn't take long to unlock once you get going. Right, we can only unlock these first two to start off with. Useful. What we want to do is press X and it's going to cost us five science points. There we go. Down here. See, we, we gain a, uh, a science piece there. Look, that will give us more science every time we do a launch we can even do that at launch pad again and get more science so what we're going to do is research that now we've got three options either this one for radial decouplers fins or aerodynamic shields of can't really see too well an engine a uh, what engine is that is that the reliant yeah that's a reliant great thrust but no gimbal okay what I want to do though is go here we get heat shields landing legs more parachutes we also get a science equipment there we go a barometer we want to unlock that so now we've got 19.6 left that costs 18 and that hmm 20 so let's but yeah let's get that one as well there we go a bit of extra science there oh that'll be a nice one to get don't you think right, so we want to return to the space center now press circle there we go let's go and have a look in the mission control there we go gene looks very happy uh, let's see if we've got any active contracts. No, we've completed all those. Gather scientific data and launch our first vessel. The next two contracts are always quite fun to do. 
want to escape the atmosphere and orbit Kermin, Kerbin. There we go. I don't think we'll get these both done in one go. But let's see if we can escape the atmosphere, at least in this episode. Vehicle assembly building. Go. There we go. Here's a ship we started off in. And it's quite a good ship to start off with, really. Because we do... We'll get rid of that one there. But... First, let's add a heat shield. So we're going to go down here to thermal. We're going to mouse over heat shield. Now you've got two sizes right now. You've got the 0.625 meter heat shield, which is tiny. Probably only good for probes. Or we've got heat shield. Now click X and slap it on there. Now heat shield weighs something. Let's see how much these weigh. These weigh 0.3 tons, but we can reduce the weight by pressing square on it. There we go. And reducing the ablative amount on the heat shield. So I don't think we'll need that much, honestly. So let's bring this down to 40. Now we want a decoupler. There we are. A TD12 decoupler. So we want to select that, X, obviously. And to slap it at the bottom there. Add this engine again. There we go. Let's add some more science. Um, science, there we go. Two hot thermometer. Let's add two of those. Because we can't do an EVA yet whilst we are not landed. So a couple of those might be handy. And a couple of barometers. And to copy a part, I'm holding down square and pressing X at the same time. See, and it copies it. So, what else do we need? Let, we're going to try and leave the atmosphere. Let's see what the thrust is like on this. So we're going to press square on the engine. And... Mm, I say let's do about 50. 50.52, that's exactly what I was aiming for. Could you tell? Coupling again. Let's go for another decoupler on the bottom here. There we go. And we'll need another engine underneath that. Now we could put a liquid fuel engine, but we've only got these small tanks. So let's go for a hammer. There we go. Okay. Let's add some fins to this. I want radial symmetry again. Let's add three fins. Mm, there we go, they seem about right. Okay, let's see what else we've got. We don't need any antennas yet. Or any more parachutes on this, we've already got one. No, that's fine. Right, let's just check this staging. So first, this hammer's going to fire. Then this decoupler's going to release. So when that releases, we really want the second engine going at the same time. So, we're going to drag this into there. So when we press stage, this will release and fire at the same time. Then on the last stage, we're going to release all engines. And then the truly last stage, because I messed up just then, and we'll have the parachute firing. Let's see who we've got piloting. Well, Jeb went first, so, Let's get rid of Jeb. We've got up, we've got two pilots, Jeb and Valentina, named after the first female astronaut, I believe. So let's give Valentina a go. There we go. Go on, Valentina. Go back on to build. Okay, let's launch this. Start. Launch.
There we go, beautiful. Right, first things first, let's do a few science things. Okay, so I'm going to click on one of these barometers. There we go. Use square again, press log pressure data. We've collected the pressure from the surrounding. There we go, green. Green is go. And we'll do the same on a too hot thermometer. Log temperature, 2.4 science, not too bad. There we go. So we want to do another EVA. But we can't really do another EVA report from the launch pad because we won't earn any science from it. So let's just collect these whilst we can. Always give us more chance to earn some more science. There we go. Let's board this. It's easy to forget, but press circle for SAS. You'll need that for when you come into launch. Let's zoom out. Now my plan is to reach about 35 meters a second with this solid rocket booster. You do need to start turning early with a solid rocket booster because if not, it's very hard to turn without any kind of steering available. You've only got the reaction wheel inside your little command pod there, so you've not got a lot of power over which direction you go. You can't turn these fins or anything so that's it. let's just get started. Oh yeah that takes off there we go let's get turning. Let's turn to about 10 degrees there on the nav ball. We're launching in this direction because this is the direction Kerbin goes round. Yeah I think this may have been too high on the thrust Oh my yes. There we go. Stage. Still going up. I definitely think we're going to leave the atmosphere this time. Just depends on if we burn up before we do. <laughs> yeah, the thruster weight was probably a little bit too high. Let's press L1 and R1 simultaneously. And we'll go into map view. Now Things are a bit small again, so we're going to do the same old zoom in trick. L1 and the right analog stick. There we go. Now this is our projected path. Going to land in the ocean. But obviously we're still in the atmosphere, it's changing slightly. And this here is the apoapsis. And this will be the highest point in our orbit. Well, not even an orbit yet, it will just be the highest point in our flight path. But as you can see, it's getting smaller because we're hitting the atmosphere and it's slowing us down. Obviously in space nothing slows you down but right now we are still going through the atmosphere at 63,000 feet want a nice crew report from in space there we go oh no let's click somewhere else there we go scroll on down to crew report collect that let's get a mystery goo collect that. Let's get a thermometer reading. Log that temperature. There we go. Oh, let's also stage. There we go. We don't need that. Let's get a barometer reading. Um, I think that's about all we can do for now. Whilst we're in space anyway. I know, let, let's um, pin a couple of these. Have we used that one? Yes, we have. There we go. So what we're going to do is click on this little pin here. There we go. That means it won't disappear. Which one of these haven't we used? There we go. We haven't used this one. So we're going to pin that as well. I'm also going to pin a mystery goo tab. There we go. I'm going to use all these as we're entering Kerbin's atmosphere again. Right. Now if you look on the nav ball, we've got all these different markers. This one here is prograde. That means we're pointing in the direction we're going. Nothing more than that. We've got this one here, retrograde. We are pointing away from the direction we are going. Which is usually good because that's where your heat shield is. Especially when you're coming in for landing. It slows you down a lot. If we're going in this direction, we'll just continue speeding up, burn up and die. Which nobody wants. 
Also got these. This is radial in. As you can see, my nose is pointing inwards to the object I'm orbiting. Radial out and pointing outwards. But for now, as you can see, we've started to drop now. And once we hit 70, 70,000 meters, that's the cutoff point. That's when we'll have hit the atmosphere again. But for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press triangle. There we go, see? And I'm going to, see, we've got all these different options. What I'm going to do is enable physics warp. You can do. That's great for when you're in atmosphere. But for right now, we just want time warp, which is there. Enable time warp. So L1, R1. R1 speeds it up. L1 slows it down. I don't advise going too fast because you'll... There we go. Once we get into the atmosphere, it shall automatically cut it off. Let's do some of these science projects. There we go. We get nine science for the upper atmosphere. Want to also log the temperature from the upper atmosphere and log the pressure data, data from the upper atmosphere. There we go. Undo all these pins now, they'll go away. But if you can see, we're not pointing in the right direction, we need to be pointing, there we go, retrograde. That should slow us down, lovely. So we're going at hmm, nearly 1200 meters a second, well, 1150 meters per second. I'm going to zoom out here. But we're going to slow down. Oh yeah, that's lovely. There we go, look. We're just coming into the thicker parts of the atmosphere now, if you see here. Slowing down, lovely. Speed, yeah, that's great. Should slow down plenty enough. Just point a little bit. Well, we don't even need the SAS on now. So if we go up here, click on this tab, it'll show us our electricity charge. Monoprop, which we haven't used, and the ablator. Let's just open that parachute about now, eh? And if you haven't done science in these areas before, do them. It can only be a good thing. There we go. 1500 meters above sea level. Parachute opening about now. There we go. Slowing us down. Oh, beautiful. There we go. I'm going to mouse on over here. And I'm going to fast forward physics warp. This is very dangerous if you're hitting the water. So before you do hit the water, you want to be ready to turn the physics warp off. So there we go, physics warp off. Slowly hit the water. There we go. Right, let's get Valentina to do an EVA here. EVA Val. And we're also going to take this data, just so we can use these again. And take this data. Go to board and log the temperature 3.2 really cold water on the equator as well and log this data there we go 4.8 okay then right now what we want to do is recover vessel wow 84 science earned from that little mission but 99 in total. We'll be unlocking some more things in the next episode. Oh, we still recovered nearly $6,000 in parts. And Valentina gained 1 XP. That's great. Okay, that's the end of today's episode. If you could like, share and subscribe. Maybe leave me a comment. That would be great. Uh, okay, see you next time. Bye-bye now.